What's up guys, I'm Max, this is MaxWorks, and this is the first installment of our cheap, fun, summer welding project videos. So today, behind me is a 55 gallon drum. Now you can find these, one of, one of the key things about making cheap welding projects is getting free metal. Um, because anybody who's ever bought metal can tell you that uh, it can get pretty expensive pretty quick. A lot of people underestimate the overall cost of materials when you go into a welding project. Now, I got this for free along with seven others, and basically I have a local source where I can get pretty much as many of these things as I want for free whenever I want them. And if you search around on Craigslist, you should be able to find a similar arrangement. I get these from a company that produces local honey, um, and so they're food grade, but they've been sterilized. Um, they're all clean, there's no honey in them or anything like that. But you should be able to find them on your local Craigslist for, if not free, then less than $10 a piece um, for these barrels. So I have a lot of friends, uh, especially down in South Austin, that ride bicycles. And one of the coolest things that we, uh, I want to build is basically a six bicycle um, rack that will get mounted kind of on the ground, into the ground, and will hold bicycles. Um, now, I don't ride bicycles. Um, because they don't have motors, but I went and borrowed this from a buddy of mine who does ride bicycles. This is a bicycle front wheel, kind of off of a uh, off of like a mountain bike type bicycle. And this is uh, the tire is about two inches wide, so we're gonna make our slits about three inches wide, um, at, or about two and three quarters somewhere in there. And that way, this wheel will basically sit inside of the half barrel cut and won't move side to side and your bicycle won't fall over, which is exactly what you want on your bicycle stand. So what I've done so far um, is I basically marked a center line. Um, these uh, 55 gallon drums are 23 inches in diameter, uh, exactly, and so I marked a straight line across. We're gonna use the, uh, the seam of the barrel on one side and then I made a matching seam right here with, uh, with a marker. And basically I'm gonna take a plasma cutter and we're just gonna plasma cut this thing into two. Um, you can totally use an angle grinder to do this and do it safely. Uh, the plasma cutter is just going to be a little bit faster, uh, which is why I'm going to do that. And then I'm going to show you guys how to make one of these out of one half, and then I'll go off and make a second one out of the other half. And uh, it'll be a perfect way to park bicycles for the people that like to ride bicycles. lessons learned. Uh, first thing, um, you want to leave these very edges together until the very end like you saw me do there. Uh, it helps the whole thing from moving around and falling apart. The other thing is you'll notice that after I made the first cut, I put on a, uh, um, a breathing filter. Uh, so these particular barrels are food grade, which means the inside of the barrels is coated with something. But my guess is it's probably not super healthy to breathe in when it's superheated by plasma. So that's why you saw me put that on, and I mean, it's always good practice to have that, um, but especially here, because I don't really know the chemicals involved. So the next thing we gotta do is this is, now that it's cut, it's a little flimsy for my taste. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna put a small piece of metal, we're gonna use metal rod or whatever I got in the scrap pile, to basically connect the two ends right here, because this part already has a bottom on it. This lid, uh, this is kind of a lidless um, bucket, basically. And so we're going to connect these two points uh, with a, just a steel rod that we're going to weld in or a piece of steel or whatever. So what we did was we measured the inside of the bottom and it came out to exactly 22 and a half inches. So what I did was I have some of this. I got this for basically for free as well as a whole bunch of this little tube stock. And to cut this down to 22 and a half inches. We ground this area off and what I'm going to do is I'm going to weld this flat right here. And then we're going to basically force this tight.
Okay, so what you're looking at here is our two slits for the tires. So I offset two inches from each end, two inches in between. These are three inches each, total of 12 inches. Um, and we're doing four inches up off of the ground on each side. And the way I drew these lines on was I have this kind of old crappy ruler that I use for, uh, for plaster cutting. And it's pretty flexible. And so I just kind of forced it against the lip and held it on. It's probably bent. I can probably bend it back. But this is kind of a disposable thing. You could also use um, painter's tape or something like that uh, to get a pretty accurate line if you needed to. Um, but I don't like that because it burns. But now what I'm going to do is I'm going to get the plasma uh, set up again and I'm going to basically just freehand cut out all these lines. Our two first slits are made and there's no real way to fold the metal so what we're going to do is we're going to get some sort of rubberized uh, cutting and put it on the inside of the flaps but you can see the bicycle wheel holds really well in place so there we go we got everything cut um, we're grinding everything down trying to smooth out all the edges um, fuck. shit's everywhere uh, Ground the back side as well, which is very important to uh, get all the slag and sharp edges off the stuff. Now, we need to find a way to protect or at least somewhat mitigate these sharp edges some more. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to clean up here a little bit. And then we're going to use, I have a bunch of rubberized truck coating left over. And I want to try painting the edges on one of these with rubberized truck coating. See if it offers like enough protection if we kind of gloop it on. So we've gone over all the seams with kind of a rubberized truck bed coating. Um, I'm going to have to wait till it hardens overnight and see how it is, but just from the feel of it, I think it's going to be enough to just take a little bit of sharpness off of those edges. Okay, the final stage is wipe down and paint. So I got this set up over here. We're going to be using Rust-Oleum enamel paint. This is a $15 Harbor Freight um, HVLP gun. The trick to these is to take them all the way apart and clean them out. They're packed with some sort of silicon lubricant. Uh, from the factory and if you try to paint with that it, it, you're gonna have a bad time so i got this all cleaned up and ready to go basically just put a um, quarter inch adapter on it and then this this is two two dollar harbor freight um uh filter air filter whatever and a pressure regulator you want to set about 40 psi between 35 and 70 depending on what you're doing and basically just some fittings so we can clip this together and clip it to my air hose uh, and get to spraying so what I'm going to do is I'm going to get the acetone, I'm going to wipe this down, we're going to then mix our paint um, and just put it down and I bought a rust -oleum. it's called Royal Blue or something like that. I don't know, it looks like a pretty good shade. This is my first ever HVLP gun, first time ever painting with one. Um, so you guys are basically just going to come uh, along for the ride with me. And hopefully we can make this thing look semi-decent, it's going to be buried in the dirt anyway uh, for bikes, so it's not too big of a deal, which is why I want to learn to paint with this project. completed bicycle rack. Um, I just put on the last coat of enamel paint waiting for it to dry. Um, the HVLP thing seems to work pretty well. Um, this was kind of a rough project but the paint that's on the other side that's already dry looks really really good and for something that's going to be outside in the rain and people throwing bikes and shit at it I think it's going to work out good. I still got to figure out where exactly I'm going to put this but for 
our first kind of upcycling, cheap welding, like metalworking project. I'm really happy with the way that this turned out. Um, the plan is to hopefully donate it to a local park um, so they can bury it in the ground a little bit and use it as a bike rack, which is what it was intended for. So this was kind of just a little baby teaser. Uh, I got some more cool, like more complicated stuff coming up next, but I wanted to get this out of the way because it's a little bit easier. So make sure that if you like this video, hit the like button. If you like this channel, hit subscribe. Follow the Cheap Welding Projects playlist uh, so you can see all the other various projects that uh, are going to be part of this uh, series. As always, I'm Max. This is Max Works. Peace.